Our next speaker is David Flores, life coach, coaching to prepare for life's experiences. Life coach, coaching to prepare for life's experiences, David Flores. Thank you, Tom, fellow Toastmasters. A lot of times you hear the term life coach, which is a lot of adults refer to, but I spent a lot of years coaching from the high school through the semi-pro years. But the best part of coaching I felt was always at the lower level with the high school, even some junior high schools that I attended now and then. And I always, always tell people, football is a football coach mostly, but it applies to a lot of team sports. That it's more than just the X's and O's and the constant working out and everything like that. There's a lot of experience you gather and you can learn as a player and as a team player. And a coach plays an important part in helping develop these types of traits in the individual. And if you look at a standard program of coaching, and I'll take football, that's one of the coaches, one of the things I coach more than anything else, is we practice on a regular basis, but those practices are broken down. We have obviously conditioning where we do physical training, trying to develop the physical attributes of the, of the athlete and develop them to a strength and conditioning program so that they can endure the rigors of the sports that they're playing in. So it plays an important part in any program. In fact, it's a continuation of all programs. You start out in physical training and you continue on throughout the season, constantly maintaining that physical training prospect. Then after you go through physical training as a part of it, in your practice session, we'll go into what we call position training. In other words, each individual plays a different role on a team and they have specialized positions that they're in. We will coach them in those positions and help them learn to develop their skills through repetition, drills, learning techniques, and a lot of things that will help them improve in their particular position to which they work. After we've gone through a position training format and practice, we'll break into what we call a team practice, where all those individuals who have practiced and rehearsed and drilled their particular position, we will mesh that together as a team. And as a team, they will function as a total unit to run the whole program. Now, those are done on a regular basis. We only play our games once a week, but practices throughout the week. So we condition, we position train, we team train. And these are the things that are done and drilled upon on a regular basis. Now, you ask yourself, how does that apply to somewhere down the world? How does that apply to you as an adult or as you, as you grow into the world? later on. Well, physical conditioning oftentimes pushes individuals beyond what they feel they can do. Early in the season, you'll find individuals who just say they can't do it anymore. They give up and you push them and motivate them to continue pushing themselves. So at the end of the year, you find a lot of these children, these kids that we work with have gone way beyond what they could do in the beginning of the year. They've made able to push themselves and do more than what they thought they could do. Well, think about it in real life. What happens to us as adults? We get tired, we get strained, we have stress, all these things that play on us physically, and we have to overcome those. But if you've been in a position and learned that you can overcome all the things that are holding you back, all the things that are pushing you away, and break through that and understand that you can go beyond what you thought you could do, helps a lot of individuals as adults to cope with the things that happen to them on a regular basis part of life. Sometimes it holds you down and you got to break through and with physical conditioning and the mental, the mental blocks that you normally stop you, help you break through that because you've done it on a regular basis and learned how to overcome those limitations. Your position training, like anything else, we all want to do something. We all want to specialize in something and you need to be able to develop yourself to the highest potential you can. It's no different in life. We always talk about, Mark always talks about being a better version of yourself. It's the same thing. When you're in your position, you play an important role and you have to be able to perform that role to the best of your ability. So you constantly want to work on improving yourself. You're constantly training yourself and drilling yourself so that you will be most adept at what you do in your particular role. Just like in the work environment in a company, every person plays an important role for the success of that company. So it's important that if you're going to be involved in a team effort, whether it's a company or your own business or whatever it is, 
that you understand that you need to be able to hold up your part of your part of the program. You need to be able to sustain it and perform at a high level, which will enhance the entire team. And again, that's something we do in life on a regular basis. Now, as a team member, same concept. If you belong to an organization, you understand that there's more can be done through a group as opposed to a solo person himself. To learn to be part of a team requires everybody understanding that what they're doing, that they're all setting a common goal to accomplish something. So as a team sport, learning later in life that you will also be part of a team in trying to accomplish something down the road in success. Now, how does that work out in real life down the road? Obviously, you set goals and for teams, obviously it's to win and become victorious or successful. Same thing happens in real life. You go for those goals and you set those goals, but oftentimes you don't get them. And just like in teams, you understand that there's times you win, there's times you lose. But when you lose, you learn from those mistakes. You learn how to improve and go on. Same thing in life. If something doesn't go right, you reach back, you reassess, look at what you did and try to reevaluate and see what you could have done better or different. Same thing in life and the same thing in team sports and with coaching. Now, as far as coaching is concerned, it's important for the coaches to understand one thing. And oftentimes it gets lost, even in leadership. Coaching and leadership fall hand in hand. Many coaches over the years, unfortunately, see that trophy and that's all they gain for. They look to get that trophy and that see them to be successful. If you just look at the trophy at the end and not look at the kids you're working with, then you're lost in your perspective. Your goal should be to see these individuals learn these life skills so that when they get off your field or they're no longer part of your, your program, that they can go into life and still sustain that same mentality of conditioning, overcoming things, learning your position as best you can, and being part of a team. Never focus on what's in it for you, but what's in it for them. So most successful coaches, whether they don't look at what's in the best interest of them, if they win, it's the result of the kids and the team. If they lose, it's the result of the coach failing to do his job. So these are things that are important in sports, in a team sport, to always remember that those focuses that you do on a regular basis help you later on in life, in real life. Tom, thank you.